Hey guys, so welcome back to some more work on series. Um, we're now going to be looking at when we take a series, remember that's a list of things being added together, and instead of just adding the first three, four, five terms, we're actually going to add up an infinite number of terms that we have here. And we're going to talk about these two different words, which are divergent versus convergent. So, what can you say about the sum of each of these series up to infinity? Well, if you keep adding, adding on an infinite number of terms in this series that you've got here, it's never going to come to a particular total, because each time you add something on, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as well. So this one's a bit difficult to see what would happen here. You go 1, take away 2, add 3, take away 4, add 5, take away 6, and we want to work out, is that going to actually fall on a certain number eventually? Is it going to eventually like add up to a certain thing? Well, probably no, actually, because you're going to eventually be adding on a huge number and then taking away a huge number and then adding on an even bigger number and taking away an even bigger number. So it's never going to settle on a particular thing. So we're not going to be able to probably come up with what is its sum to infinity. So this one, I'm not going to be able to work it out. This one, I'm not going to be able to work it out. But this one seems like maybe we should be able to work out what will happen, because if I'm only adding on a smaller amount each time, we should be able to say what this one is actually going to converge to. Now, this one that I've got here, I'm doing one, I'm adding on a half, then a quarter, then an eighth, and we're going to see if that might actually add up to something, because you're adding on something smaller and smaller each time, so you would think that it would actually give us a particular answer. So these two that we have here are what we call divergent, because they don't go to a particular value. You actually can't work out what they add up to. But this one, the sum of this series, is going to be convergent. It is actually going to add up to something. So I've written here that the infinite series will converge, like this one here, provided that the common ratio is in between minus 1 and 1, which we sometimes write as just the modulus of r is less than 1. And the reason that this will converge is because the terms are getting smaller and smaller as you go across. So this one is divergent because the, the common ratio is 2. This one is divergent because the common ratio is... It's actually, it's not clear. This one doesn't have a common ratio, actually. This is an arithmetic kind of series, really. But not even an arithmetic, it's got a... A different thing each time. So this one is not, neither arithmetic not, nor geometric. And then this one is convergent because the common ratio is uh, less than one. The common ratio here is just a half. So provided that the common ratio is less than one, what happens to r to the power of n as n goes to infinity? Well, if you think about doing like 0 0.9 or 0 0.5 and you do it to a very, very high power, for example, let's do 0 0.9 to the power of a thousand, you get 1.74 times 10 to the minus 46, it basically becomes zero. So r to the power of n, if r, the modulus of r is less than one, r to the power of n, as n becomes very, very big, basically becomes zero. So how can we use this formula that we have here? Well, if we're summing it to infinity, so if we're making n become really, 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 really big, because we're trying to do it to an infinite number, then this r to the power of n bit is basically going to disappear, which means you would just have a brackets 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r. Well, 1 minus 0 is just 1, so you end up with just a over 1 minus r. So for a convergent geometric series, the sum to infinity is just a over 1 minus r. So let's actually work out what is the sum of this series that we've got. Well, the sum of the infinite series that we have is just going to be a, which is 1, over 1 minus, well the common ratio is a half here, so it's 1 minus a half, and 1 divided by a half is two. So this series here actually adds up to two. And I guess the way that you can think about this is here is my sort of geometric proof. This is a bit off piece here, so don't worry if you're a bit confused by what I'm talking about. Okay, so first of all, I've got one. So I'm going to shade in, I've got all of that. And then I'm going to add on, if this is another unit here, I'm going to add on a half and then I'm going to add on 0 0.25, which is a quarter, so you can see that's a quarter of the whole thing, I'm going to add on that, and then an eighth is half of that, and then I'll be adding on a sixteenth, 
1 over 32, 1 over 64, and this pattern would just keep going, but it would never, it would eventually completely feel like it was filling up this whole thing, which was, that was a 1, and this was another 1, so that's why the sum to infinity is actually 2, you can kind of visualise this. This is not on the curriculum, this is just something a bit extra that just made me think of when I saw this, um, so I thought you might like that. Okay, so let's have a quick look at doing some of these sums to infinities. So the value of a here is 1, the value of r is a half, this is actually the one that we've just done, so it is going to be a over 1 minus a half, which we just said is 2. Okay, next one that I have, my value of a is 27, my common ratio, well it's minus 9 divided by 27, that's minus a third, so my sum to infinity is 27 over 1 minus minus a third, so that's 27 divided by 4 thirds, which is 81 over 4. So if you kept adding this series up, you would get the answer 81 over 4, or 20.25. This one here, they've had to tell me that P is in between minus 1 and 1. That's because if P is not in between minus 1 and 1, we're not going to have a convergent series. Remember, for there to be a convergent series, the common ratio needs to be less than 1, or the modulus of the common ratio needs to be less than 1. So our value of A here is P. Our value of r here, the common ratio, is also of p. So the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r, which is p over 1 minus p. And we can just leave it as p over 1 minus p. This one, um, let's see what's happening in this case. Well, the first term that we have is p. The common ratio is this divided by this. So the common ratio this time is 1 over p. You can see that here, 1 over p divided by 1. 1 over p. So the sum to infinity is going to be a over 1 minus r. We don't normally like having fractions in fractions, so I'm going to times the top by p and I'm going to times the bottom by p. So I've got p squared over p minus 1. So that's what we've got for this one here for the sum to infinity. So here we go. The fourth term of a geometric series is 1.08 and the seventh term is 0.23328. Show that this series is convergent. So if we want to show that it's convergent, we need to show that the modulus of R is less than 1 if it is convergent. So really what it wants us to do here is find R. And then we're going to do the sum to infinity of this series. So to do the sum to infinity, we're going to find A. And then use the sum to infinity equals A over 1 minus R. Okay, so it says the fourth term is 1.08. So we know that 1.08 equals a r cubed. Remember, you reduce the power by 1 for this. We then got told that the seventh term is 0 0.23328. So 0 0.23328 is equal to a r to the sixth. You might need to go back and remind yourself the formula is reduced by the power, the, n is, the power is reduced by 1 here. So I'm going to do this one divided by this one. So that's a r to the 6 and a r cubed. And then I've got on this side 0 0.23328 and 1.08. I did this divided by this. The a's cancel and you get r to the power of 6 divided by r cubed, which is just r cubed. And 0 0.23328 divided by 1.08 is 0 0.216. And then I'm going to cube root both sides. So r is the cube root of 0 0.216, which is 0 0.6. So for that part A of the question, to show that this series is convergent, we can say because whoops, the modulus of r is less than 1, the series is convergent.
it's going to tend towards a particular answer. Converging means it goes towards something, diverging means it goes away from something. Part B of the question, we want to find the sum to infinity of this series. So we're going to find out what A is, and then we're going to use this formula. Well, I'm going to come back and I'm going to use this now. So I have 1.08 equals A times R, which is 0 0.6, and that's cubed. So I'm going to figure out what A is by doing 1.08 divided by 0 0.6 cubed. And we get that A is equal to 5. Now, you don't need to do this, but it's just kind of nice thinking about what the series actually looks like. So we have A plus... 3, I'm multiplying it by 0.6, multiplying it by 0.6 again, and you get 1.8, multiply it by 0.6 again, you get 1.08, multiply it by 0.6 again, you get 0 0.648, and this is just going to keep going and going and going, and when you add up all of these numbers, we're hoping it's going to come to, well, we're not hoping, it is going to come for this sum to infinity, it's going to be a over 1 minus r. So it's a over 1 minus, and r is 0 0.6. So that's 5 divided by 0 0.4, which is 12.5. So that's what the sum to infinity is. You could keep checking. You could literally add these values that you have here, 5, 3, 1.8, 1.08, and you'll start seeing it's roughly getting up to that point. So you've got 5, 3, 1.8, 1.08, 0 0.648. I mean, the numbers we've written out so far is 11.528, so it's about one further away from 12.5. Okay, let's try another one. For a geometric series with first term A and common ratio R, the sum to 4 is 15, and the sum to infinity is 16. Find the possible values of R. So this is where we cannot get confused by this formula, which is the sum to N, which is a brackets 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, and this formula. You cannot get these formula. This one, you cannot get these confused. You should not get these confused. This is the sum of the series. This is the nth term. So here, it's telling you that s4 is 15. So we're not using this one. We're using this one here. So let's actually write down. They've told us that s4 is 15. So 15 is going to be equal to, well, I don't know what A is, and I don't know what R is, but I do know that N is 4. So it's 1 minus R to the power of 4 divided by, whoa, that went on a bit longer than I was expecting, divided by 1 minus R. And then the other thing that they've told me is that the sum to infinity is 16. So we know that 16 is equal to a over 1 minus r. Now you may not be able to spot this, but if you look what we've got here, we've actually got an a over 1 minus r. So because we have an a over 1 minus r, I know, because I've got these two equations that both need to be true, I know what a over 1 minus r is. a over 1 minus r is 16. So I can substitute a over 1 minus r into this one. So I'm going to say 15 equals that a over 1 minus r is going to be replaced with a 16. And I have 1 minus r to the power of 4. Now don't do any expanding here. Let's just divide by 16. So I get 15 over 16 equals 1 minus r to the 4. And then when, when I rearrange this, I get r to the 4 is 1 minus 15 over 16 which is 1 over 16, and then I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides, so that's 1 over 16, I know what the answer is, don't ask me why I'm doing this so slowly, the fourth root of that is a half, however, it could also be a plus or minus half, if you think about when you do a minus a half and you raise it to the power of 4, you would get 1 over 16, so it does say find the possible values of r, the reason that there are two values, possible values, so it's from the plus and minus root that we've got here. It then says that given all the terms in the series are positive, find the value of A. So this was part A of the question. Part B of the question, well, because all of those values are positive, then we know that R must be equal to a half. So I'm just going to go over to this one. I'm actually just going to find out what A is. It's basically just simultaneous equations, glorified simultaneous equations. 
So we get 16a over 1 minus a half. So a equals 16 multiplied by a half. So a is equal to 8. 1 minus a half, a half. Multiply it up here, and you get that a is equal to 8. Okay, this one is actually a new spec exam question, um, and I thought I'd put this one in here just so you can see the kind of stuff that might be coming up in the exam. Um, you may like to do the exercise. The exercise is going to be 3E, and then you'd like to have a go at doing some of these ones that we have here. Um, so if you want, you can pause and have a go at this one first, and that's what I would normally do in class. I'm going to go through this one in just a second, and that's us done on this chunk, okay? So, common ratio is R, sum to n terms is Sn. Given that the sum to infinity is 8 over 7 times the sum to 6, show that R is equal to this thing where k is an integer. Well, don't worry about this too much to begin with. Let's just worry about this thing that we've got here. So we've been told that the sum to infinity is 8 over 7 multiplied by the sum to 6. Well, the sum to infinity, we know, is that a over 1 minus r. And then we have 8 over 7 multiplied by the sum to 6. Well, the sum to 6 is a brackets 1 minus r to the power of 6, all divided by 1 minus r. So it looks like there's some things that we can tidy up on both sides of the equation here. I can cancel a from both sides of the equation. I can also multiply both sides of the equation by 1 minus r, and that will get rid of that, leaving me with a 1 on this side. So let's actually finish this off. I'm going to try and find out what r, to the power, what r is by solving this equation. So I'm going to multiply by the 7, and I'm going to divide by the 8. So I get 7 over 8 equals 1 minus r to the power of 6. So, rearranging this, r to the power of 6 is 1 minus 7 over 8. So r to the power of 6 is 1 over 8. Now, if you try and put this in your calculator, and you try and do the sixth root of 1 over 8, you get this. Okay, I'm not even sure if you can see this, but you get 0 0.707, which is not something that they want it. They want it written like this, okay? So you've got to take this a bit more slowly. Now, you should recognise something. You should know that 8 is 2 cubed. So in fact, I'm going to take the cube root of both sides and see what happens. If I take the cube root of this side, I would get left with r squared. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm actually taking the cube root or you could think about raising it to the power of a third. Because I know that I can do the cube root and get a nice answer on this, on this side. If I take the cube root of this side, I'm actually just going to be cube rooting this. So I know that r squared is equal to a half. Now you can see where this has come from. If I now want to find out what r is equal to, I can take the square root of both sides, and I get 1 over root 2 plus or minus a half. And you can see here that k is the integer to be found, where k is equal to 2. That came out terribly, let's just write that again, where k is equal to 2. So if you tried to put this on your calculator, you'd have done all the hard work, you wouldn't have got that last mark um, for just writing it in the way that they wanted. So take it a bit slowly. Say to yourself, OK, well, I know I can do the cube root of that. And I'm just going to confirm 1 over root 2 is the 0 0.707 that we had before, so you probably can't see that on my screen, but it's true, okay? You, um, I think we've actually already done this question, so that's kind of pointless and terrible planning from me there, so let's leave that one. But you can have a go at doing exercise 3E, and then the next lesson feels like it's a kind of different type of theme of things. It's to do with, um, oh, there's the answers. It's to do with some different kind of notation. So we'll be having a look at that after the Easter break. Okay, guys. See you soon.